Welcome back to another episode of Winning Conversations. We are continuing our Turn the Table series, and we have the Flowers Couple today. Hi. How do y'all feel? Are you excited? Uh, excited, a little nervous. It's yeah. weird on this side. It is weird. It's a bit. And Dan's here too. Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> hey, sorry. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us. Tanya is here all the time, so thank you, Ryan, for joining us. You're welcome. Happy to... Happy to have you here. So I'm, let's just jump into this. Um, okay. I'm just taken aback by looking at Ryan as like looking at a better looking mirror of myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> the hairstyles are the Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys all yeah. know it. I'm looking at him like, oh my gosh. He, you know what? He really, yeah. he pulls it off well, dude. You do it. Thank Some you. people don't. You do. All right. You have Sorry. to have the right shaped head and you guys both do. He's a gifted man, yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Sorry. You have the right shape. I was just, I was just. I was just Anyways. I got lost in his eyes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, Dan, why don't you start us off then? I th Well, I'm actually excited to start it off for this reason, because mm -hmm. we've hinted at this a little bit. Like, if you're a listener of the podcast, you, Tanya, mentioned that you kind of have a, not a checkered background, but a, uh, how do you phrase it? Um, well, Cult? you didn't grow up in the church. <laughs> I didn't grow up in the church. church. I grew up in a church, but yes. it was not, it was not the kingdom of God. It was a cult. Or um, I like to say it's like a high demand religion because there's lots of groups out there. Like, you know, what's in the news now is that shiny, happy people documentary, yes. you know, yes. that's another kind of that high demand. That's like the, the fundamentalist, like yeah. Duggar guys. Okay. Group. Okay. Yeah. But, um, but Mormonism is like that. So I grew up in the LDS faith and didn't get saved till I was like 19. And so, so like you were raised in a Christian household. Yeah. And you started dating her while she was still a heathen. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> sorry, God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no. So, so what was that so, like in that process of obviously yeah. we joked about seeing a finished right. work, you know, like we know where you're headed, but like, you right. know, what was that like? <laughs> well, it was, I mean, that was my like rebelliousness was dating, dating a Mormon, a Mormon girl. girl. Dating a Mormon? <laughs> yeah. Wow. My parents were like, oh, you're. Only per reason for dating is to find a wife, and you're not going to marry a Mormon. So, and I was, and so it was a couple of weeks. Like we dated, and I, oh, sh sh but then I was, was like, like, but they, I mean, I did have like a check. Yeah, as yeah. a freshman in high school, I was like, yeah, gotta let you go, girl. And <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about like his church life? Like, what did, what was your perspective? Uh, I was gonna win him over, man. I was. You yeah, really, really? I gave him a Book of Mormon. Oh so, yeah. <clears throat> so wow. 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 But, you know, uh, wow. you know how Saul was first Saul before he was Paul, and he was like Judaism and it, you know all of the stuff. Sure, zeal. That was I was zealous. I believed it. I drank all of the Kool Aid. I, uh, you know, my my parents were on the outside, like picture images of like what you consider a Mormon church, and then they divorced which broke that image mm. uh, significantly. Not that behind the scenes, I mean, Ryan knows it was not like, it was not what the picture looked on the outside. Yeah. So there was, uh, there was this huge, like my response in that stress was to like dive deep, deep in. So I was like two feet in, Everything any prophet said, any conference. You soaked it all I'm going in. Going to the temple, any chance I would. You were like a speaker at like a, one of the conferences. I, I was, yeah, I was one of the youth leaders wow. for their youth wow. stuff. Like I was, All in. well, and, and I, I just, just for context, it's a, the LDS faith is a workspace salvation. So you have to earn your way to heaven yeah. and earn your way to the highest heaven. So I knew my family was broken and I was going to make sure I made it to heaven. So I was in this whole journey, even when we dated as freshmen of like, like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to win God's heart. It was kind of my, my thought, which you. He already right. has our hearts, but, sure. but for sure I was off that. But we we were well for a little while. I hated him, like when I hear Miss Ellie, and then and then I liked him again. <laughs> oh, I love that. And uh, um, how could you hate that guy? Come on. Now. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the football team, and he was a lifeguard. I mean, there were lots of reasons to hate him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I oh man, grieved you. So yeah, yeah. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> but once we graduated high school, there he was like, you know, I'm 18, like. Were y'all still dating? Or y'all had well, like split and then you 
came back together? We, ha- we had this agreement that if neither of us were dating at the time of graduation, we would walk together at graduation. You know how you pair up and walk in your wow. cap and gown? Ah. And so that happened to be the situation. And we went and did nice. all the senior stuff and we're like, okay, well, maybe this is a thing. <laughs> and so he was no longer under the, I don't know what you call it, under the leadership of his parents fully. Yeah. He thought he was at least. Making it more, I, guess, I mean, really, becoming, it was making, you know, my relationship with God was becoming my own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, I, I was learning like kind of compartmentalizing and how to have, you know, relationships with somebody that may not be saved, but, you know, we can still be friendly and yeah. stuff sure. like that. Did, <clears throat> was he like the inspiration to start going to church or to become a Christian? I mean, how well, did that happen? Uh it was a process. So like I said, I was two feet in, I was a hundred percent sold on it. Um, but there's a lot of things about that faith, um, belief system that are, that are pretty rocky. Like if you hold, if you hold them up to the truth, they don't stick. Right. So I was seeing these little things all along the way. And I would have conversations with people at the church and I'd be like, well, you know, it says this, but it also says this. And, you know, we believe this, but it also, you know, like there were, Lots of those things. So God was really working on my heart. Mm -hmm. He was a part of it. I mean, and he was pretty clear. Like, this is what the Bible says. I don't know why. Why don't you get it? Why don't you understand? Why is there a question about this? (laughs) My Bible Um, says something totally different. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But the Lord was really working on my heart. And one day I was in my bedroom by myself and had both the Book of Mormon and the Bible out. And I was just frustrated because I had done everything that I was supposed to do. Right. Like I hit all the boxes like a Pharisee, you know, like I had done mm-hmm. all the things and I still don't have, I still don't have that closeness that I wanted with the Lord. And so I told God, like, I don't care. I don't care what you tell me to do. Like, if you tell me to be Mormon, you tell me to be Christian, you tell me to be Buddhist or whatever you tell me to do, <laughs> I just want to have a relationship. With, I just want to be right with you is what I said. And sure enough, the Bible, I just kind of like flopped it on my bed and it was John three sixteen, like, the famous verse of the Bible, right? Mm. And I said, well, if, if nothing else is true, but that verse is true, then I should get born again, whatever that meant. And I had zero idea. I'd like no Did you ask him? Well, sort of. I um, I had heard plenty, mm-hmm. <laughs> as zealous <laughs> as I was. ABCs. Yeah, I had heard, I had heard that, but I didn't, I mean, until you experience it, yeah. you don't really know. So I just said this really simple prayer. And then he was working at the pool that day and it was close to Christmas, and so I, like, go down, and he happens to be at the little check-in window, you know, so I walked up to the window, <laughs> and I was like, I don't know exactly what just happened, but, um, you know, I asked Jesus to be my Lord. I was like, I feel like he's been my Lord my whole life, but this is different. Like, I feel different. I, something's new. Yeah. And he was like, oh, okay. And then, like, everything Were you like, romance. finally, or <laughs> what? Yeah. I, I felt like it because we had... I mean, we were friendly as seniors and then, you know, starting like first year of college and, and I mean, our relationship, like we had grown close Mm -hmm. and it, it was like, and and basically it was like, okay, we're getting to this point in our relationship. Like, but if we're going to be more serious, like we got to be on the same page. Yeah, something has to happen. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't hate you. I'm not mad, but either you got to get on my page or got to get out. Yeah. <laughs> he said it that friendly and nice too. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, I mean, that was Christmas. We were engaged by February and we were married by July. So things move rather quickly. Yeah. Wow. We were also it usually does. I was like, I was like nine months was my timeline. Yeah. You like, like shattered that. That's yeah. fantastic. Uh, along that path, I, we did our premarital counseling. I got filled with the Holy Spirit at that point. We were in a really, really great church in Oregon. Like the pastors that married us mm-hmm. are uh, wow. are super dear to our hearts, and so they really helped me like figure out figure out life on this side. Um, and that's crazy to say too that the backdrop of all this is Oregon. Yeah, because a lot yeah. of you might assume this is Texas, right? Because I would <laughs> I, when here. you tell your story, like, I just right. assume Texas, but you're like, yeah. no, this is an Oregon backdrop, which is even more. You know, I think awesome because yeah, it is. <laughs> the Oregon culture is not exactly a spirit-filled culture all the time. Right. right. It was one of the few really healthy churches in the area, but we fell in love with it. And um, and the reason I fell in love so deeply with it was because I lost 
all of my social network when I left the church. Sure. Yeah. So I, all of my friends, all of the people I hung out with, the people I graduated with, the people I was headed to college with were all in that church group. Sure. And so two, you lost your community. I lost my whole community. I had two people attended our wedding that were Mormon. That was it. And the one thing that Mormons do right is community. Yeah. They are family orientated. They love each other. They take any time we moved when I was kids. Um, there was a whole crew that showed right. up. Like you never were without food. They have a whole like social system that makes sure people aren't are fed and clothed and all always taken care of. Mm -hmm. So not only like I mean I was in love with Jesus, but right. I was gonna lose like the consequences that were were significant. So to walk into a church that was healthy, I didn't understand things like we were talking about um, on a few episodes ago. Like context wise, you walk into a church and you're like fish out of water like I was like why are there drums on the stage like <laughs> is that reverence I don't know like <laughs> I remember I had all of these conversations with Ryan I was like I was like they just fell over like <laughs> what, what is happening them over? Yeah. yeah and so I had a huge um it was probably two years you think of time that it took me to really kind of deconstruct what I had believed before and kind of walk into like I was like I don't know what angels are like I need to find a book about angels I don't, I don't know, you know, what all of these things are. And so there was a huge growth process before we, before we, before I felt like I truly understood. Is that why you gravitated <laughs> so much to this church was because of community, community? Because we've talked about that before too, like how heritage, it is a, like, if anything, if you say anything about this church, it's that it is a great community. And I feel like that might be one of the reasons why you we're so drawn to coming here. Yeah, I would say so. Do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when we moved to Texas, like before we moved, um, mm -hmm. my dad worked for uh, KCM. Oh, cool. And so he had a list like, oh, these are churches in the area. We had gone to uh, we had gone to church out there and, and knew we weren't, you know, called there. Yeah. Um, but it's like these are, you know, Word of Faith churches that are partners and – and we obviously knew, you know, Dr. Savelle has a church, but we also, you know, knew from watching TV, like, you know, Dr. Savelle's in Australia, Canada, whatever. Yeah. He's not at the local at, church. Yeah. But we we also knew, like, that, you know, God's heart is for the local church. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was like, well, we want to go check out Jerry Savelle's church, but meet that, you know, pastor, pastor. and that's going to be there, that's going to be um, doing the pastoring. The, and what did you, I mean, what was your first time experience here? <laughs> Our first time experience, we walked in on anniversary Sunday mm -hmm. um, in 2008. Cute. And so we walk in and there was, yeah. um, I mean, Pastor Justin preached and uh, I think he gave away like a hundred dollar gift certificate that day <laughs> nice. and a comforter, like he had all these illustration things. Um, but they're like, yeah, stay for the barbecue. And I think that that day they were chicken legs or chicken, turkey legs, turkey turkey legs. legs. you know, like gigantic they, turkey legs. They like, don't do that in Oregon. We, <laughs> never, we had never, we had no never frame of reference for a, a turkey, turkey leg. leg. <laughs> We're like, I guess this is what you eat in Texas at a church picnic is a turkey leg. That's hilarious. And Welcome so to Texas. We stayed and we got to meet some people and um, got invited to serve our first day. Here. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you guys want to go do a shift over at the face painting? <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> that is great. Maybe next time. Yeah. So you, you said you listened to, I mean, you said this before that you listened to uh dr savelle's tapes growing up yeah did you think that you would be working at oh, his ministry no. that yeah if you would have told me because and i mean we didn't have we lived like up in the mountains like so there was our tv we had rabbit ears it could get two channels <laughs> growing up. and my parents couldn't afford satellite but my grandparents they lived in town they could and so my grandma would put a like tape recorder like up to the tv and that was when you hit the push and or push play and record at the same yeah. time we call that bootlegging where i'm from but <laughs> yeah maybe yeah, call something different i don't know yeah some My royalties we owe you. i owe you for wow. a tape but wow. then it was just like every night like push play and about the time that side would end i'd fall asleep and uh next night flip it over push play just kept flipping it till the tape wore out and and now you're here. And now you're here. Yeah. Now you work for yeah, Dr. Savelle. Yeah, now you work yeah. for Dr. Savelle. That's, yeah. yeah Tape works. amazing. <laughs> Tape works. Tape works. <laughs> yeah. So you're having turkey legs. How many did you have? 
<laughs> if you don't know Ryan, it was cold. It, I don't remember. I have no idea. That is I think so we've funny. talked about like, people know Ryan for a multitude of things. <laughs> one of them is being funny. He's so funny. He's great. Second one is his consumption ability. Food. Dude can eat. <laughs> which I'm impressed by. You can throw down. But here's something about you that I think, I don't know if people notice, but I noticed it immediately. It was one of the things that I thought was so impressive about you was you're really observant. Like you pay attention when people don't think you're paying attention. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, how some people kind of kind of cruise along and you just kind of think they're not aimlessly wandering, but like you're not focused. Whereas you don't have that. You seem to always be having your finger on the pulse of the environment you're in. And I don't think if people know that, I just really noticed it when I was just watching you operate. I'm like, man, he's really aware. He's not <laughs> mm -hmm. making it known, not making it obvious, but you're quiet really observer. Absolutely. Like insanely aware of what was going on around you. And I'm like, that's a really impressive skill set that a lot of people <laughs> don't really talk about, but I think you have in spades. I don't know if that's something that. Yeah. That, and I mean, it's, it's called a heart condition. Like Tanya was talking about before, like to list the number of departments that we've worked in, in the church, like, uh, it's, I mean, I might not be called to, you know, stand behind a pulpit, mm -hmm. but I can do like everything else to make sure that God's word gets delivered. Yeah. Right. And I feel like that's almost kind of like, but like, like I, we've talked before, like almost like silly putty, like just fill, fill the gaps, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. plug the holes. Like I might not be whatever the best, you know, kids teacher, but I can, you know, I can read right. Noah's Ark. I can, you know, <laughs> I can help the kids, you know, yeah. color, yeah. color page, you know, we can do that stuff. I mean, I might not be the best, you know, parking lot guy or the best greeter, but I can, I can fill in, mm -hmm. I can, you know, help us Where's, get there. Where it's needed. And so I, maybe that's, I'm yeah, just looking that's really, for something to do. No, that's really, <laughs> that's really the heart behind it. Um, I think it was uh, 2014 or 15 or so, the Lord had given me a word because Again, when you serve in lots of places and you're you're doing whatever is necessary, right? Yeah. To see the mm -hmm. kingdom go forth. And that has always been our heart. Even in Oregon, that was our heart. I mean, I we've served in a lot of departments there. Like the job description or title has never been something that has mattered at all to us. But the Lord I asked the Lord, I was like, So who are we? Like what is our role? And he told me connective tissue, which I work as a nurse, so that's like makes sense in my brain. And so when you look up what connective tissue is it is responsible for um, nerve innervation, heat formation, transportation of nutrients. It's, it's responsible for, it innervates every organ of the body, connective tissue does. And, uh, and basically what he was telling me is, this is, you are doing what you're designed to do. So like rest in it, know that like your position where you're supposed to. So, I mean, now we're doing jobs that we have never done before in our entire lives in ministry and learning as we go, like this, podcast yeah so yeah so <clears throat> speaking of that can you explain to everyone like that yeah. vision you had for this and why we're sure. even doing for this podcast? like the fact that we're here right now let's go ahead and give credit sure. where credit's due um you know we get the the incredible blessing of sitting under some incre like the most anointed teachers i think in the body of christ we get fresh hot meals every sunday every wednesday anytime you walk into the doors um all of Dr. Seville's resources are at our disposal. Um, the people that come in to minister to us, like we aren't without the word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you're hungry, you're missing it because if you come in, you're going to get filled. Uh, but I had an idea, like what would a podcast for Heritage of Faith actually look like? Like what would add to that? And I wasn't sure if a teaching platform was exactly what we needed because we get, we get it. We get incredible word. We do. And you can get it on just about every platform out mm -hmm. there. Like, we, you know, the the vision of the house is make it known to every available every available voice. So, uh, but what we do have here that may be unique is that connection, the the fellowship we share with one another, the relationships that we have. Um, that's something that starts at the top. You know, Pastor Justin and Annette are like that. Doctor Seville is like that. We have these incredible people in our body but we don't always get a chance to know them yeah. Sunday and Wednesday. Unless you're serving like elbow to elbow, then you really don't know somebody's story. But even story. then it's very surface level too. Because you don't, I mean, unless you're like seriously connecting with people and like talking to them throughout the week, it is just, 
it is very surface right level. we're gonna get this job done today yeah. you know it's yeah. game time let's yeah. go like <laughs> you do the game <laughs> i'll do the lesson yes somebody else can do uh -huh. you know like whatever is going on like you got these doors i got those doors right um go get the welcome pack you know whatever's going on and 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 thrive groups help with that like building connection mm -hmm. but there's so many great people in our church mm -hmm. that being able to tell the stories that they have the the victories that they've had right mm -hmm. i mean we have people who have been That's healed nice. of incredible things people who have um i mean if you look back at some of our episodes like gems like um larry brazil you know oh, he's yeah. an nfl yeah. player retired nfl player he's a minister of the gospel he's the most unassuming guy he walks in shake his hand you would never know the places the Lord has taken him. Yeah. And yeah. I think those are king in understanding what the body of Christ is truly like. Mm -hmm. Like if we don't know it's our true. people, then we don't, I mean, then we are the body of Christ. It's not a building. It's not a platform. It's not a, um, a sermon series. It's really who we are. I love that. It's true. <clears throat> How long from the original vision? Oh my gosh. Um, we've talked about this. So this is why I want you guys to understand. This was not like also in a spur of the moment yeah. thing. No, this was a vision process. So um, I think back in my notes that I had found was like 2018. And it's 2023 now. Um, this has been a long time coming. It's been something that has I've had to process through. And then when I brought it to pastors, you know, there was more conversation about what that truly looked like. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't be more thankful that it's actually, I mean, I would have never believed for a season two until, you know, like it's just been a huge progression as we've gone through and, and it wouldn't be possible without you guys. I mean, really without mm -hmm. our team and without <laughs> Ryan supporting, I Ryan, mean, Brad. he's, uh, thanks, he's, Brad. he's, uh, thanks Brad. Um, and he's like the silent partner. I yeah. mean, he's, he, he may be quiet, but you're right. He's observant. Super. And so he'll listen to an episode <laughs> and he has, you know, great in, insight into what we do. So what's it like then doing ministry together? I mean, serving together as closely as you guys do in all levels. What's that like? It's, uh, it's, it's good. It's, I mean, having somebody, uh, you know, like, it's like, there'll be an issue like in, a, in another department or something. And it's like, I remember hearing conversation. I think Tanya knows, you know, the, the solution. Um, so a lot of times it can be quicker that way. Um, sometimes there's, I mean, cause you're, it's your spouse. Yeah. And so it's, you're, you're, you're going through it together. You want to be in agreement. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like it's, it has increased like our communication For sure. cause it's like, like, okay, I'm sensing like, like she's, you know, she might bring a problem and it's like, like, uh, I, I think the way she's thinking about it is incorrect or Something like yeah. that, or, or I, you know, I don't agree with it, and so it's like, you know, where it might be like my buddy or something, be like, nah, bro, like <laughs> that, you're way off. <laughs> like if I like come at her like that, yeah. it is you know your spouse, like sure, that has right. the potential to like really, it's like, okay, like I love you, I want this to be better, so have you you know thought about this angle yes. or, yes. and and so I feel like it's helped our communication. Um, and, and then obviously with, you know, going, you know, a billion different directions, like that, we've got to communicate. Right. Like, hey, you got the kids and you bring them to me <laughs> here and then I'll drop them off there. And Ministry can be hard work, especially, I mean, you need a good partner Absolutely. to help you through it, to right. help you navigate ministry life. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. There's yeah, been so. a couple of times where I was like, uh, I can't. Your grace must have lifted. I'm, <laughs> I, I gotta go. I'm out. And yeah, yeah. Time is like, well, let's just pump yes. the brakes. Right. Yeah, right. you need pray that. a little bit too. Right. I think also as we become parents and stuff, wanting to make sure our kids understand the heart behind kingdom. Mm. Like you know, they yeah. are here. They are here a significant amount of time when we're serving and what's going on. And I never like want them to kid. take it for granted or um, be complacent about it. Like like we're doing kingdom work. Like this matters. This is important. This isn't. This yeah. is not just. Um, you know, this thing needs to get printed and cut and stacked so the team yeah. can use it. This is, this is kingdom, and it has a significance to God. And yeah. um, if we don't live that, then they never will understand sure. it. Mm -hmm. So I don't want them ever to get an idea of ministry or church life as just a bunch of work to do. Right. I want them to understand that um, everything that we do really should glorify God and should honor mm -hmm. God, including like this podcast and anything we do on a Sunday or Wednesday needs to, they need to see it in us first, 
that so then when they are asked to serve or step into a whatever they're called to do they can do it yeah with a pure heart with the right heart that's good i mean well i have a great question for there you. it is <laughs> I have a great question for what you what do you mean i'm it's, not ready it's a for great this question <laughs> so making winners in life what does that mean what? to you i have know you ever heard this a, question a crazy question what does that mean to you making winners in life me? Yeah, you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll to give me, Tanya a little time to think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, making winners in life, as, as it relates to from the church, mm -hmm. is that the local church is, you know, we bring people in that are, that are broken, that, you know, need something. You get fixed, get filled, and then can go out and give it. And, and I feel like that's, you know, whether it's giving it, in the church or mm -hmm. at your job, whatever. Um, I feel like that to me is winning in life. That's good. Good That's answer. Good. That is a really I good like answer. Good I've job. been thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he's more prepared than I am. Right? Cause I've heard all these answers and they're all phenomenal. Yeah. Um, one thing I always keep coming back to is being sensitive to the Holy spirit. I think the more sensitive you can be to what he's talking to you about to, and in, in, in church life and also like, out in the world, wherever, wherever you go, if you can be sensitive to God at the grocery store or, um, you know, a lot, I work as a nurse. So there's a lot of moments where I really need to hear from God about what I'm doing with the situation, with the patient, with interacting with a physician, whatever it is. Um, I think people who win in life are people who are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in all situations. And um, yeah, that's it. Good. That was good. <laughs> Those are good. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah. Nice. Oh my gosh. I love it. These are fun. Yeah, it's great. It's way more fun on this side than that side. <laughs> I know. I agree. <laughs> like, I'm just, this will be a one-time series. <laughs> so, right? so, I mean, we love having you guys here. Like, I, I again, I think it goes back to, there's some significant ministry power couples in this house. You know, like we, like Marty and Brad, they're huge. You power guys, couples. power couples that just do so much for this body. And I think you guys oh. exemplify that on so many levels. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, again, the fact that we get the joy to do this and have these conversations, mm -hmm. this goes on your heart and you're obedient to that. And the fact that you guys have served in so many different positions, it's just awesome as an example to a lot of the body. Like this is what it looks like when you're doing ministry mm -hmm. together and how rewarding it can be yeah. and the things that are on the other side of that. So thank you guys for being here. This was fun. Thanks yeah. for, thanks for having us. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for letting us having having you guys, right? Yeah. Thanks for coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> this was good. Yeah, having me. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You are here. I am here. Right? You're just well, eye candy. We <laughs> want to thank you guys. <laughs> we want to thank you guys so much for, yeah. for listening or for watching. If you are watching, again, we are on YouTube, so we want to say thank you. For everyone who's enjoying this, we are so happy to do them. Uh, we hope you come back next Friday for another episode of Winning Conversations where we will be interviewing some more people. We're excited hey. about that. Have a great Have day. more conversations. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>